everyone, this is Stephen Strawn at the Cast Iron Cookware Channel, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. Today I'm starting a new series called Cast Iron Cookware Answers. So if you have a question that you'd like to be answered, go ahead and leave it in the comments and I'll do my very best to get back to you and answer those questions. Our first question that we're going to cover today is kind of a two-part question, is number one, can my electrolysis tank explode? And kind of going along with that, is it a good idea to have ventilation when you're using an electrolysis tank? The answer is yes and yes. And we're going to give you the breakdown coming right up. Okay, before we go out into our shop and do a little bit of experimenting, we're going to cover a little bit about how electrolysis works and kind of the dangers that may be involved in it. Number one, electrolysis is basically uh, electroplating in reverse. You are unplating the seasoning that's on your cast iron or the rust or whatever's on the surface. You're taking it off and actually plating it onto your sacrificial anodes inside your electrolysis tank. And inside your electrolysis tank, there is a solution called your electrolyte. And what I use basically is superwashing sodas and water. I use one cup of superwashing soda per five gallons of water. During the process of electrolysis, there are bubbles that are being released from your cast iron. And it's floating to the top, a lot like when you open a soft drink and the bubbles kind of bubble to the top. Sometimes you get more bubbles, sometimes you get less, depending on how flat your soft drink is. But with electrolysis, uh, you have also oils and things coming off of your cast iron that are floating to the top. And this will cause bubbles to form on the top of your tank, depending on how much oil is in the water and debris. So what happens is those bubbles are hydrogen oxygen gas. So you're creating hydrogen oxygen gas during the electrolysis process. Hydrogen oxygen gas is highly flammable and explosive if you have enough of it. But thankfully most of the time it dissipates and is gone. The molecules of hydrogen are so small that they just seep through, you know, small little cracks and crevices in your home or shop or wherever you have it. But I do advise to go ahead and ventilate because you're not sure how much is dissipating and how much is not. If you have a very airtight room, then maybe a lot of it's not dissipating and it's collecting in the ceiling of your room and you don't want that. So ventilation is key. You wanna make sure that you have a fan blowing out air or blowing in fresh air uh, because you don't want an explosion. Have I ever heard of an explosion taking place on that scale, no I haven't, not with electrolysis. But we want to be safe because we don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about somebody's electrolysis tank exploding and blowing their house up. Whether it can happen or not, I don't want to take a chance and I don't want you to either. So just get back to the process. When the bubbles rise to the top and you have an oily surface from your super washing sodas and the oils and all the residue off of your cast iron, Sometimes those bubbles can increase to, to a stage that you have foam on top. I've seen it is, you know, most of the time it's just like a half an inch or a quarter an inch of foam on the top and the bubbles pop and they dissipate and they're gone. But occasionally you'll put a piece of cast iron in there and for some reason it will foam wild. I have seen it foam, you know, just keep coming up like a column and I've seen it look like a a head on a root beer. Basically it just foams and covers the whole top of your electrolysis tank. Now then you can have some problems, especially if you don't have proper ventilation and also you have to make sure that you don't have a flame source nearby or you have to be careful with your sparks from your battery charger. I would suggest and always as a rule of thumb, never disconnect or connect your battery charger while it is on because the least little spark can set off those bubbles because, like I said earlier, they are highly flammable. So we're gonna go out in our shop and we're gonna take a look at it 
Gonna do a little bit of experiment. We're gonna try to light it on purpose a couple of times and just to see how big of a pop we can get. Bear in mind, I'm using safety glasses, also using earmuffs, because I've had a few explosions that I didn't realize was gonna happen and they were way louder than what we're gonna to experience today. So do not try this at home and be careful when you're fooling with electrolysis equipment. So let's go outside into my shop. We're gonna check this thing out and uh, let you see what happens. Okay, we're out here in my shop where I have my electrolysis tank and I also wanna make sure that we're safe while we're doing this experiment. So I have safety glasses, and do not try this at home. This is not something that you really want to be playing with. Also have hearing protection. I have my shop muffs. Get these on. And I have a, a long stick, kind of rigged, with a little bit of a, something to light my bubbles with. So we're going to take a look at our e-tank now. Okay, as you see, it's bubbling pretty good. I got a little bit of foam there and some bubbles kind of around. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off first. We're gonna go ahead and take our, our fire source. And here we go. Okay, here we go. I just want to let you know too, you'll say, well Steve, I'm not planning on lighting my tank with a lighter. This is what can light it. It's very easy to get a spark. And that can light the gas, especially if you have a lot of foam built up around it. Always make sure you have your tank cut off before you, before you disconnect or connect. Okay, we did have a little bit of a pop. Nothing too extraordinary, but things can happen. You know, I have seen the foam build up to be four or five times as large as that, and it will catch you off guard if you're not looking for it. Also, with all the little bits and pieces of debris that's inside the tank and sitting on the foam, it can, you know, get in your eye. Uh, so we don't want any freak accidents. So make sure that you cut off your battery charger before you disconnect or connect your electrolysis tank. Most of the time, it's just going to be a surprise shock. But uh, just be careful when you're messing around with electrolysis tanks. I hope that you've enjoyed cast iron cookware answers and I hope that these are answers to your questions. And if you have more questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll do my very best to get to them. Thanks again for watching the cast iron cookware channel.